634, the U.S. Justice Department is investigating how Memphis police officers use force and conduct arrests. The DOJ says MPD may be disproportionately focusing its traffic enforcement on black drivers. Allegations started piling up long before Tyree Nichols was beaten to death. This morning, in a story you'll only see here, Bria Jones talks to a man who's suing the police department because of what he says happened to him. Thing. In this area, I can put it however I want. You're now looking at body camera footage WREG obtained from a 2019 incident involving MPD officers. Complaints of situations like this are what prompted this announcement Thursday. The U.S. Department of Justice is opening a civil rights investigation into the city of Memphis and the Memphis Police Department to determine whether there is a pattern or practice of conduct that violates the Constitution. In 2019, the man you see here, DeAndre Billingsley, alleged excessive use of force after he was detained in Binghampton. His pending lawsuit says he was wrongfully stopped, detained, and raped by an MPD officer. Billingsley says the incident happened after he pulled over to talk with a friend who was also patted down. They just jumped out of the car and, and he slapped his hands on the hood, like hands on the hood now. Like, never asked me my name. He says what happened next, he was not expecting. He stuck a finger in my anus, say he was looking for drugs. Jake Brown is Billingsley's attorney. You determine excessive force based on whether the, the amount of force was unreasonable for the circumstances. And uh, in my client's case, it certainly was. I mean, they, uh, they inserted a finger into his anus without following the uh, the proper statutory protocols. In Billingling's case, he says while marijuana was found on his friend, officers found no drugs on him and eventually he was let go. He and his attorney believe the federal investigation into MPD is warranted to end a culture that disproportionately impacts right, black and brown down. lives. Has a pattern of treating certain members of certain communities in this city as less than entitled to fewer rights, entitled to less protection, and that is not what the law says. I shouldn't have to die for my voice to be heard. I don't want to be the next Tyrese Nick or George Floyd. I, I mean, I need my story to be heard while I'm still breathing. Wow, the DOJ says it wants input from citizens during New this tonight, investigation. Tonight, a day after the Department of Justice announces an investigation into the Memphis Police Department and the city, we're hearing publicly from the mayor for the first time. Well, Steph and Greg, the mayor made it clear that he was disappointed mainly because he was denied the chance to speak with the DOJ before they decided to launch this investigation. First, I was disappointed because I asked them specifically if I could talk to them before they reached this point. And I know they talked to many other folks in Memphis and outside of Memphis on the issue, and they obviously refused to do that. During Thursday's presser, Department of Justice officials said they had briefed both Mayor Jim Strickland and Chief C.J. Davis on his civil probe, a pattern or practice investigation. But Strickland says he wants an in-depth conversation about the impact this could have on the city. This department is investigating the patterns and practices of the Memphis Police Department. This comes seven months after five officers violently beat Tyree Nichols during a traffic stop. He later died. Federal authorities will look at the department's use of force, searches and arrests, and whether it engages in discriminatory policing. Justice opens an investigation into the Memphis Police Department. Blake Eason is at the WKRN.com alert desk to explain why. Hey, good morning to you, Nikkel. Yeah, this doesn't come as a shock to anyone who saw what happened to Tyree Nichols. And now the DOJ wants to look into the operations as a whole at the department. Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark made the announcement moments ago. She insisted the investigation is not related to just one incident in particular, rather a look at the entire department. Clark says the DOJ is focused on three things. One, unlawful searches and arrest. Two, patterns of behavior that led to improper uses of force. And three, the intentional targeting of black residents. This comes after the city received multiple complaints complaints about possible patterns of civil right violations. This investigation hopes to get to the bottom of that. Two years after submitting resignation papers to the Memphis Police Department. Never forgot any of the things that I went through. A former police recruit who doesn't want to be identified is speaking out about the culture he claims he experienced while going through the training academy. There are some good officers there, but 
the bad officers outshine them. Mm -hmm. And so that it really needs to be something did about those bad officers. Over a few months, the man says he witnessed and experienced multiple instances of discrimination against race and religion. Some of them have a, 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 a master slave mentality. It's very belittling and it just, I, I couldn't deal with it and how they treat other black people was a big issue. They didn't never talk to the white officers the way that they speak to the black officers. Hey, Shay, that former recruit grievances with MPD go back to 2021. He says there's not a date that goes by that he doesn't think about his experience. He's speaking out now in light of the investigation by the DOJ. A big part of the DOJ's investigation will include getting input from the community about their experiences with MPD, which the former crew plans on doing so as he looks to put this chapter behind him. Some people do choose to be officer because they really do want to make an honest living and they do want to make Memphis a better place. But it's hard for them to do that when the majority don't have that same mindset. And I can't tell you that the former recruit says he doesn't plan on returning to law enforcement anytime soon. We did reach out to MPD for their side of the story, but never heard back. For now, reporting here live outside of North Main Precinct, Jordan James, WREG, News Channel 3. Okay, Jordan, thanks for that. And that community meeting that Jordan just talked about, hosted by the DOJ, is this week on Zoom. The meeting is August 1st from 6.30 to 7.30 in the evening. You're urged to discuss your experiences with the Memphis Police Department. You must register online. The DOJ plans to host more in-person community meetings in the near future. We've posted information on our website, WRG.com. These just past allegations come at a time where the Department of Justice is investigating MPD after receiving multiple complaints of excessive force making improper stops and racial disparities, which prompted them to investigate their pattern and practices. We look forward to working together with the city and police department towards the shared goals of ensuring constitutional and non-discriminatory policing and promoting greater cooperation between law enforcement officers and the community. 2022's annual report recently published. MPD doesn't give details about how each incident started, but it does list data based on the officer's reports. The most common response for using force was because the person was non-compliant. They resisted arrest, used verbal resistance, or tried to fight. Half the incidents resulted in injuries. 505 people were taken to the hospital. In some cases, the officer was also injured. MPD listed the demographics of the people officers used some kind of force against. 1,097 were black men, eight times more black men than white men last year. What you find is in the poor communities, there's much more police saturation, which means there's much more racial profiling, and there's much more direct contact between law enforcement and civilians. Fisher says the more accurate and adequate data published, there's more genuine conversation and real change. The city of Memphis responded by vowing to reimagine policing, which included a new website listing MPD's policies, ways to file complaints against officers, and published more internal data surrounding excessive and unnecessary force, like the annual reports. I think we have to operate in transparency in all that we do, especially if we put ourselves out there as public service, and public services aren't limited to those who are elected. Memphis Councilman J.B. Smiley has been pushing to publish more internal police records. So that we can build some type of public trust. And I think ultimately that's all what we want. <gasps> In 2022, there were more than 760,000 calls for service. And Memphis police say a sliver of those calls led to officers using some kind of force. In most cases, officers say noncompliance was the leading reason why they used force. Officers reported using a chemical agent 90 times, a taser 59 times, but mostly the force they used was physical. See, every time an officer uses some kind of force, department policy requires them to fill out a response to resistance form. MPD then reviews the forms, analyzing trends and patterns to determine if change and improvement can be made. The data collected is then put into an annual report. The city also vowed to post the summaries of internal hearings when an officer is found to have used excessive or unnecessary force. The last one published, you can see, was in 2021. The city told us the police data is updated quarterly, but as of early July, 2022's annual report had yet to be published. The city says it only publishes excessive force cases that are closed, were found to be sustained, and where the officer didn't resign. They added there hasn't been any completed cases yet for 2022 or 2023. All the cases were 
still open and the investigations are ongoing.